Another major hurricane now threatens major population centers in Florida. Even though this storm is still days away, officials are already sounding the alarm. It has grown rapidly to a Category 5 storm in Fort Myers. They are not wasting any time taking the precautions more seriously, especially after Hurricane Helene. Residents and business owners spending the weekend, as you can see, filling sandbags, trying to protect their properties. Julie Martin joins us now from our Atlanta studios. And Julie, we spend a lot of time talking about rapid intensification. Today, we saw it on full display. Yeah, really impressive. We saw that storm go from a Category 1 yesterday to now a Category 5 storm, uh, picking up more than 90 miles per hour. We're now at 160 mile per hour storm, a Category 5 with Milton, which has rapidly intensified as we expected it would here in the warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico. Also starting to see a more of a tighter circulation as well, indicating that it could even get a little stronger, really, before uh, it does reach landfall. Now, the one good thing we do think will happen is as it makes its way toward Florida over the next couple of days with a landfall expected on Wednesday, it will encounter some unfavorable environmental factors and that wind shear is one of them. That will likely take it back down, at least according to the National Hurricane Center, a lot of the models showing it back down to a three as it makes landfall perhaps Wednesday evening as a category three storm, maybe 125 mile per hour storm. And that's gonna be somewhere in this general zone. This is that cone of uncertainty as we call it but really all interests along the west coast of florida need to be ready have your plan in place the time is really running out a mass evacuations are in effect right now ongoing we're talking about millions of people getting out of the way of this hurricane the biggest evacuation since hurricane irma back in 2017 these are the tracks and unfortunately taking it all across the peninsula back out onto the other side into the Atlantic still as perhaps a category one storm uh, as it does do that. This is a look at our future cast showing the storm making its way unfortunately in this scenario right near Tampa Bay and that is about the worst place this storm could come ashore. Very low lying area. It's built up to about three million people since the last hurricane and unfortunately storm surge is going to be an issue in this area is especially vulnerable as well as all of the barrier islands to storm surge so uh, certainly not looking like a good scenario there we've got the hurricane warnings here from Cedar Key all the way down to Naples all of you in this area even inland really stretching all the way over to uh, places like Orlando really need to have a plan in place now and get out of the way of this hurricane if you can we've got the storm surge here in red places like Fort Myers Sarasota Bradenton Tampa we can see as much as nine feet or more of storm surge. So that is, uh, in some cases, unsurvivable storm surge. Those are the words from the National Hurricane Center. This is the area I'm really concerned about. Uh, Tampa Bay here, we are very vulnerable. We've got all of these barrier islands here. Pinellas County, we're talking about places like uh, Largo, St. Petersburg, St. Peach Beach, Anna Maria Island. All of those barrier islands, very vulnerable, just hit with Helene, Hurricane Helene, and there's still a lot of debris that's left behind as well. We heard from the governor said they're very concerned about that debris flying around out there becoming projectiles. So that's going to be an effort to try to get as much out, out as possible. But even farther south, once we get into places like Port Charlotte, Punta Gorda, back down into uh, Bonita Springs, all of these areas are especially vulnerable when it comes to storm surge. So again, this could end up being a, a catastrophic catastrophic situation. I can't stress that enough. The flood threat is real as well. We're talking about major flooding here in some of these major metropolitan areas like Tampa, like Sarasota, even into Fort Myers where we saw that awful flooding with Ike just a couple of years ago. Uh, yeah, a couple of years ago. Uh, Ian, rather. Ian, a couple of years ago. So again, a very powerful storm setting up, time running out. We've got millions evacuating in Florida, uh, states of emergency declared there, and unfortunately a Category 5 monster storm churning in the Gulf of Mexico. Del? Julie, we talk about a Category 5 storm as if that is the top of the scale. It is the top of the scale. Yep. 
but that may not be the top of the wind speeds that, that this storm continues to generate. Yeah. We talked about this the last time there was a hurricane. Is there now a need to come up with a category six, seven, eight, as these storms now appear to be growing faster and stronger? That's a valid discussion. It's a valid discussion to have, and uh, I'm sure that in the uh, land of uh, emergency management, that is probably an ongoing discussion uh, with climate change. These storms are getting stronger, they're getting more intense, and they're getting larger. And so that is just reality. That's the way of the future. I meant to mention, Del, by the way, this storm is also going to get larger. It's relatively compact right now, but once it gets closer to land, it is expected to elongate and get larger, which means more people are going to be impacted. Julie, final question before I let you go. People think about 150 mile an hour winds. I remember being in a tropical storm with 45 mile an hour winds, could barely stand up. <laughs> a hurricane at 85 miles an hour knocked me off a boardwalk. Um, describe, if you will, for the people who may not know what it is like to even try and stand in a storm of 150 miles an hour. Yeah, I've, I've personally not stood in a 150 mile per hour storm, but I will tell you, I've been in a category four storm out in the field and literally had to be tethered to a pole so that I wouldn't bl blow away, if you will. So it is not something that anyone can really withstand uh, when you have those kinds of winds, because keep in mind the gusts, you could have a 150 mile an hour storm. Those gusts could be upwards of 200 miles per hour, 190 miles per hour. So uh, again, we're talking about mass destruction with that kind of wind. The water, as we just saw in Helene, is also a very big concern. Water, it's just deadly and you can't get away from it in a hurricane. Julie Martin on the scene in our newsroom in Atlanta. Julie, as always, we thank you very much.